Eisenhower answers America. My husband makes more money today, but we can't buy nearly as much food. The administration's own figures show that today people can afford less butter, less fruit, less bread, less milk. Yes, it's time for a change. Eisenhower answers America. 70 years ago, war hero Dwight Eisenhower ran that ad on his way to winning the presidency. President Harry Truman did not seek re-election in 1952. Truman threw his support behind Illinois Governor Adlai Stevenson. With a mixture of national celebrity and domestic issues like cost of living, Eisenhower beat Stevenson. Now, 70 years later, it's likely inflation and consumer prices will once again be mentioned in political ads for the midterm elections, then for the 2024 presidential election. Inflation is a perennial theme in political advertising. In this episode of C-SPAN's The Weekly, we look back at how prices and inflation have been used by both sides in presidential campaign commercials. Two people have appeared at a national presidential ticket five times, Franklin Roosevelt and Richard Nixon. Roosevelt ran before political TV ads were a thing, so let's start with Nixon. In 1952, Nixon became vice president, running with Dwight Eisenhower. He was 39 years old. In 1960, Richard Nixon ran his first campaign for president. In one ad, like Eisenhower did in 1952, he talked prices. Ladies and gentlemen, the vice president of the United States, Richard M. Nixon. I would like to talk to you for a moment about dollars and cents. Your dollars and cents. Now, my opponents want to increase federal expenditures as much as $18 billion a year. How will they pay for it? There are only two ways. One is to raise your taxes. That hurts everyone. The other is to increase our national debt, and that means raising your prices, robbing you of your savings, cutting into the value of your insurance, hurting your pocketbook every day at the drugstore, the grocery store, the gas station. Is that what you want for America? I say no. In 1960, Richard Nixon lost to John F. Kennedy. In 1968, he ran for president again and ran this ad, which mentioned inflation. In our administration, we will stop the rise in prices, stop the rise in taxes, and have prosperity without inflation. Nixon beat Hubert Humphrey in 1968. Four years later, Senator Humphrey appeared in this ad for Nixon's Democratic opponent, Senator George McGovern. Now, perhaps you voted for Mr. Nixon in 1968. Looking back, would you have voted for him had you known that inflation and unemployment would both get worse? That you would be forgotten. Nixon won re-election in 1972, then resigned in 1974. By the way, what was the last thing Richard Nixon mentioned on August 8, 1974, before telling the nation he was resigning? You got it, inflation. To continue to fight through the months ahead for my personal vindication would almost totally absorb the time and attention of both the President and the Congress in a period when our entire focus should be on the great issues of peace abroad and prosperity without inflation at home. Therefore, I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Vice President Ford will be sworn in as president at that hour in this office. Running against Jimmy Carter in 1976, President Gerald Ford mentioned the inflation rate in an ad. He filmed the ad while flying on Air Force One. It looked presidential, but sure was noisy. Tomorrow is a very crucial election. But tonight America's strong, America's free, America's on the move. But two years ago, America was in deep trouble. When I became president, inflation was over 12 percent. We were on the brink of a serious recession, the worst in 40 years. There had been a loss of trust in the White House itself. Jimmy Carter ran a commercial devoted exclusively to inflation. The visual consists entirely of a scrolling and lengthy grocery bill receipt. I'm Jimmy Carter. The problem isn't six and a half percent inflation. That's just something written on a piece of paper. The problem is, how can a family pay those grocery bills? and keep up with the mortgage and taxes and pay for a college education. People work hard, and they should be able to keep what they work for. I want a chance to give back to you the security and the hopes for tomorrow that inflation is stealing from you. 
With your help, we can do it. You can depend on it. In 1980, running for re-election, President Jimmy Carter faced strong opposition in the Democratic primary. Massachusetts Senator Ted Kennedy nearly beat him. Here's a Kennedy ad featuring actor Carol O'Connor. He played Archie Bunker in All in the Family. Friends, Herbert Hoover hid out in the White House, too, responding to desperate problems with patriotic pronouncements. And we got a hell of a depression. But I'm afraid Jimmy's depression is going to be worse than Herbert's. I'm supporting Senator Kennedy because he's out there facing issues. Inflation, sky-high prices, an almost worthless dollar, unemployment. I trust Ted Kennedy. I believe in him in every way, folks. Kennedy for president. We gotta fight back. Ronald Reagan beat Jimmy Carter in 1980. Then, running for re-election in 1984, Reagan easily beat Carter's vice president, Walter Mondale. Reagan was helped by the famous Morning in America series of ads. This time, an ad celebrated low inflation. It's morning again in America. Today, more men and women will go to work than ever before in our country's history. With interest rates at about half the record highs of 1980, nearly 2,000 families today will buy new homes, more than at any time in the past four years. This afternoon, 6,500 young men and women will be married. And with inflation at less than half of what it was just four years ago, they can look forward with confidence to the future. More recently, in the 2008 presidential campaign, both Barack Obama and John McCain ran ads with specific mentions of gas prices. Here's Obama's ad focused on McCain's economic proposals. I'm Barack Obama, and I approve this message. I'm not up on the economy. Don't know much about industry. Really can't explain the price of gas. Or what has happened to the middle class. But I know the one and one is two. And if I could be just like you, what a wonderful world this would be. Do we really want four more years of the same old tune? You might have recognized the tune from Animal House, the movie that featured the song. And here's John McCain's ad, also with a gas price mention. He's the biggest celebrity in the world. But is he ready to lead? With gas prices soaring, Barack Obama says no to offshore drilling and says he'll raise taxes on electricity? Higher taxes, more foreign oil. That's the real Obama. I'm John McCain, and I approve this message. Finally, let's return to where we started with Dwight Eisenhower. At the top of this podcast, we heard a 1952 Eisenhower ad on price increases. Here's an ad from the 1956 campaign when President Eisenhower once again beat the Democrat he faced four years earlier, Adlai Stevenson. Remember how for many years before Eisenhower became president, you might get a raise, but then prices would go up and you were right back where you started, or even worse. In the eight years before Eisenhower, the cost of living skyrocketed up 50%. But in four years with Ike, the cost of living has edged up less than 3%. Yes, Ike stopped inflation just as he promised he would. Probably won't get that type of messaging next time around. And now, two inflation bonus clips. In his first address to Congress as president, his February 18, 1981 economic address, Ronald Reagan mentioned inflation 15 times. Two weeks earlier, on February 5, 1981, in his first Oval Office address to the nation, President Reagan held up a prop, a dollar bill. Let me try to put this in personal terms. Here is a dollar such as you earned, spent, or saved in 1960. And here is a quarter, a dime, and a penny. 36 cents. That's what this 1960 dollar is worth today. And at the present world inflation rate, and our rate should continue three more years, that dollar of 1960 will be worth a quarter. What initiative is there to save? And if we don't save, we're short of the investment capital needed for business and industry expansion. And here's something even more personal. President George H.W. Bush was on the re-election campaign trail in Fresno, California, May 30th, 1992. 
During a town hall meeting, a little girl gave President Bush a dollar bill to sign. Here's how President Bush reacted. I'm Summer Rogers, and I'm from JN News. And every, as you know, everybody's concerned about the economy. And I was wondering if you would sign this dollar bill showing me that you would promise to try to make this dollar bill worth just as much or more as it is in four years from now. Yeah, let me tell you something about the dollar. Let me tell you, one way to take that dollar and make it shrink is to let inflation get out of control. The cruelest tax of all is inflation. You don't see it, but you feel it, and the dollars shrink. You don't buy as much. One of the bright spots in an otherwise gloomy economy over the last year has been that inflation is down. And I want to have economic policies enacted that will stimulate economic growth, but that's got to be done without making that dollar bill shrink. And I think we can do it. And right now, interest rates are down, inflation is down, and that makes us poised for the best kind of economic recovery. I'm just saying that we've got to be sure it stays down because that's the, that, that's the way you make this dollar come back. When I come back four years from now, I think, I, I think I'll be in this line of work then. Uh, that, uh, that, uh... President Bush signed that dollar bill but four years later, he no longer was in that line of work, having lost the presidency to Bill Clinton. In terms of buying power, that $1 bill from 1992 is now worth just over 40 cents. That's it for this episode of C-SPAN's The Weekly. A reminder, you could do your own searches in the C-SPAN video library. Just go to cspan.org and use the search bar on top. You can search inflation, you can search consumer prices, and it's all for free, which means... Inflation will never be an issue for the C-SPAN video library. We keep adding videos, but the price stays the same. That price is nothing. Thanks for listening, and happy searching.